Hey everybody, this is Tom from Small Scale Life. Welcome to my garden. Thought I'd do a Whole30 update plus a little garden update here on March 25th, 2020. Uh, it's raining out. <laughs> but hey, water is life. And I thought it'd be good to get back to the garden and talk a little Whole30 while we're walking through it and kind of outline what's happening as we move forward. So let me flip the camera around here uh, and we'll show you what's going on. So welcome to the garden. Uh, this is it, the garden area. We've got uh, the fencing around here, uh, an attempt to keep out the dog because, man, tough on the grass and everything. And I've had uh, Karma the Wonder Dog jump into the garden before. We're going to reconfigure that this year because uh, she does not jump up into these two foot high wicking beds. So each, each bed here is two feet high and she just doesn't seem to uh, want to jump in there. So these are wicking beds, two watering troughs here that I've converted into wicking beds. You can see this is the intake, these pipes here. Also have an overflow uh, snorkel, and that's right there. So this pipe down at the bottom, so I can control the level of water inside the tank, which is pretty cool. There's about four inch drain tile on the bottom, maybe another inch or so of sand. You can see this one, I drained it out. Uh, so putting that uh, snorkel down, I can actually control the level of the water inside the tank. So this one is only probably about an inch high. If I put that uh, snorkel up to 90 degrees, I could probably have a good six, six inches of water in here in no time at all. So really an interesting way to, to manage the water of your system. Uh, these are really nice beds. It's about seven feet long, two feet wide. I've grown beans, potatoes, and peas in this bed. I had some lettuce growing in there in the fall, and uh, there's nothing growing in there now. This was my tomato, cucumber, pepper, <laughs> an onion bed. Really the jack of all trades. And I'll show you something in there. Maybe you can see it. If you zoom in a little bit, you can maybe see that. I'll show you in a minute. And this was my hybrid rain gutter grow system here where I grew all kinds of peppers and including Harold, the white pine. So that's the only plant that's in there right now, but it's not the only plant that's growing. So let's go take a look in here. This is a flower bed in this area. Really kept the, we're gonna be adjusting the fence to keep Karma the Wonder Dog out of there. She's tough on the nice pretty flowers that are in here and uh, wanna keep her out of there. So there's nothing growing in this bed. And uh, this is where I had a serious slug outbreak there was a four by six bed that was underneath this and the slugs loved it. And when I had the potatoes growing here, <laughs> I pulled about 250 slugs out of this garden. Nasty. So it'll be heavy duty slug control this year to try to eliminate that problem. Uh, but in this bed, this was a mass, this was a, this was a busy little bed and I, and you can see here, I've got some growth already. So that's kind of cool. I've got some green onions that I overwintered. So these were started from scraps from, um, from like Aldi. These are green onions and I had grown them like I am right now in, uh, cut the bottoms off with the roots, put them in water and slowly they grew. And they, they did really well last year. They were great growers. So it looks like I still have some growing. We'll see how they do. Nothing else in here. Hybrid rain gutter grow system. Basically what it is, is this is a bathtub. You can see uh, the water is filling up here. I've got a bulkhead right here. You can see that. I'll go around to the other end. So there's the bulkhead right there. And when water gets up to that level, it'll drain out. So we are filling up here slowly but surely. And Harold, the uh, the white pine, we got this on vacation last year and it's just growing right along. So I added some worm castings and some compost there. We're gonna see what he does. But uh, he was pretty dry and he needed a good drink. He needed a little, little uh, some new minerals and such, but some new uh, organic material. But yeah, so this is the garden. We got a lot planned for it. Oh, one last thing. This was my salsa garden. It's a really small, compact garden. There's no liner in it. I had two kitty litter trays in here and, and grow bags. And this year I'm gonna put a liner in it and turn it more into a grow bag garden system like, uh, like a rain gutter grow system like I've got there. So that's the game plan. But uh, this little garden area, a lot is gonna be happening here. This is gonna be command center of, of, our, gar of our 
of our grow food growing efforts this year. And uh, I'm going to put in another hybrid rain gutter grow system where I'm going to grow tomatoes and potatoes. And uh, <clears throat> and I'll have some peppers and some other things growing here, maybe some cukes. This and these other two beds are going to grow a whole variety of other crops because uh, we've got to grow high quality, high calorie crops, broccoli, some cauliflower, greens, carrots, other things that will sustain us this year. So that is the game plan. The other thing I wanted to show you too, it's right down here. Maybe you can see that. But one of the first things to grow in Minnesota this time of year, you can see them, all these red dots. That's rhubarb. So I've got rhubarb coming up already in March. And that's pretty cool. With some 60 degree weather, we're gonna have rhubarb soon. And that's freaking great. So, a lot is gonna go on. You know, at the same time, we've, we're, uh, you know, part of the decision on what I'm growing was, um, was part of the Whole30 challenge. This is a, a challenge that I'm doing, uh, cutting out the dairy, the alcohol, the sugars, the processed foods, um, grains, all that stuff, cutting that out, trying to eat more fruits and vegetables, more uh, meats, proteins, you know, grass-fed meats and that kind of thing. Eating real food, not stuff that's processed like Doritos chips and all that stuff. And uh, want to continue to grow. I'm going to continue to eat that way, more like a paleo type diet. So we're going to need produce to, to make that happen. So I'm going to be trying to grow as much as I can supplant to supplement the grocery list and another thing too is we want to have enough to um that we can can and not just the dilly beans and the pickles those are delicious but stuff that you know we can make into soup and that we can also um you know eat i i had i grew potatoes and by october they were gone <laughs> and I've still got pickles and I still like dilly beans. I still have um, peppers that are pickled in the basement, even tomato sauce. Still have that down there that has not been eaten, but the potatoes are all gone. So that tells me that I'm waste, I'm not wasting, but I'm growing too much of that other boutique stuff. I need to grow stuff that we're going to be eating. So that's a really big deal. Now, I'm in round two. Um, of the whole 30 challenge i already completed my first 30 days lost 13 pounds it was a really good experience i'm doing a round two and this is my day nine uh overall today is going great past three days if you've been watching the other videos i'm doing this every three days instead of every day now but this is uh day number nine and overall since the last update it's gone fairly well i did have some stress eating on monday i thought i don't know just kind of caught up to me a little bit, you know, the whole honey badger virus, coronavirus, or Vesa virus, whatever you want to call it, that kind of caught up to me. And then we were talking about shelter in place, just kind of caught up to me. Um, did have some chocolate and a little, did a little stress eating. Um, I'm, I'll admit it. I mean, it's, it's kind of stressful with all this stuff. Uh, and, and finally the stay at the shelter in place, the stay at home, order came today it's going to go in effect on friday so kind of this uncertainty is over we know what's coming we know what it looks like we know what the rules are so now we just deal and um you know if you want to know more about that you can go to minnesota news websites instagram i published up some of the governor's slides just to show people to get them in the know uh, on small scale life the instagram and uh and we'll go from there Again, this is, it's good to know. It's good to know what we're dealing with. The other thing too is I uh, had a post podcast video, YouTube video on what is resilience. What is resilience? So small scale life, we're changing our mission. We're adapting. We're finally, I finally figured out what the hell we're doing. <laughs> so we're gonna be doing resili uh, uh, resilience through small scale living or through simple living. Ugh, I can't botch it up. Resilience through simple living. So that's what we're doing here at Small Scale Life. So we're going to be talking a lot about gardening. We're going to be talking about getting healthy mentally, physically, 
financially. You know, we need to be able to take these kind of blows to ourselves, our families, our economy, our country, our city, and get back up and keep moving, right? And there's hope in that. There's hope in that. That you have friends, you have something in your pantry, you have something in your bank account, you're growing something, and you can take a hit and keep on moving. That's what we need. Just consuming everything in sight isn't working anymore. Consuming all these products from China, <laughs> that's not working either. So we've got to figure this out again. We've got to figure out how to do this stuff ourselves again. And be financially solvent in the process. Debt spending only works if you can keep printing. And none of us have a printer. If we did, we'd probably be in jail. So anyway, this is Tom from Small Scale Life. Go check out that video. I'll have a link here at the end. Check out that podcast. Subscribe to our site. Uh, if you want to learn how to grow seeds, grow plants from seed, I've got a guide for you on Small Scale Life. Sign up for the newsletter. I'm going to do, I got my newsletter groove back on. We're sending out some newsletters again. Get that get a copy of that if you don't want that wait i'm going to have one on transplanting plants also on potting soil potting mixes and comparing different systems everybody does it a little different even i do it a little different uh, but we're going to be talking about that we've got a lot of stuff coming up so subscribe to the newsletter get that guide pass it around don't keep it or you can keep a copy but if you print a few copies put it in free library get people gardening that's what we need to do we need to get people moving. We need to get people growing their own food. That'll start you down the path to self-reliance. All right, enough preaching. A little 10-minute video here. Well, thank you, everybody, for watching. This is Tom from Small Scale Life. So glad you're with me in my garden. It's going to be a busy spot this year, so we're going to be out here a lot. We're going to be doing a lot of stuff here. So thanks for tuning in, and uh, stay healthy, stay vigilant. Be careful. And remember, learn, do, grow. Be a little better every day. My name's Tom. I'm from Small Scale Life, smallscalelife.com. Check us out. Get your free seed starting guide. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. See you real soon. Take care, everybody. Please hit subscribe and hit the little like button.